Is the future of every person, every nation, or indeed of the universe encoded in its past? Are we as individuals supposed to live our lives randomly at the behest of every external stimuli that calls for our attention? Or has the creator of the universe set before us a sure path that he is imploring us to follow for our own good and ultimate fulfillment? No doubt he has. Do you believe that the excitement of life lies in its uncertainty? Or would you rather know what the future holds for you? And if you did, would you continue making the same choices that you're making right now, knowing for sure what the future holds? Now, more than ever before, God is raising up the prophetic voice to illuminate the individual, the church, the nation, and the nations. Because ignorance is not bliss. There's going to be a lot of um, interest, I'm talking globally now, um, interest and venturing into planetary life as never before. And actually, uh, during the mid, about just over the mid of this year, there will be certain indications about that whole planetary discovery. A new discovery may help answer the age-old question of whether or not we are alone in the universe. Scientists say three newly discovered planets rotating the same star have the potential to sustain life. CNN's Tom Foreman has more. Life, that doesn't necessarily mean we're alone in the universe because this discovery way out there, about 22 light years away in the constellation Scorpius has scientists very excited. They say they found a star with not one, not two, but three different planets that might support life. It's called Gliese 667. Let's zoom in out there and take a look because they say the view would be quite spectacular, a lot like this. Actually, towards the end of this year, there's, uh, there's something that I saw. It was like a comet. People will begin relating it. Um, some of the segments around it will begin relating it to um, uh, what happened the star that appeared in the days of Christ. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. For unto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Prophesying is quite different from the office of the prophet. Any one of us, as long as you are in the body of Christ and you have the Spirit of God, you can speak under inspiration to encourage, you can speak under inspiration to, 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 to comfort the body of Christ. But the office, the difference comes in for the office of the prophet, somebody called in that office. It goes a little higher. For them they have even gifts that work at, on a constant basis, 24-hour basis, in their lives. And they also come across with a certain authority in their ministry. Not everyone is a prophet. Prophet, prophesying, he's speaking what God is saying. So to me, prophecy is the mind of Christ, the mind of God revealed. The prophetic is something that's being reintroduced into our communities um, and the way I see it is it's a very vital component of the spiritual welfare and well-being of not just an individual but a corporate body. There's a person who is going to rise up there's a, an individual that is going to rise up and um, he's going to be so vocal in in defiance so vocal in defiance and um, here is an individual um, um, who will come and um, he's, he's speaking all defying things and secretive things concerning the leader in this nation now, the defiance shall really be a move of God to expose certain 
hidden agendas which God is not into. The Uganda People's Defense Forces and Elite Special Forces Command is still struggling to come to terms with the latest assassination claims by one of the country's top generals and a war hero, General David Inyefunza. In his secret dossier, David Inyefunza claims that some senior army officers plan to assassinate top government officials who are believed to oppose to an alleged plan to propel President Yuwari Museveni's son, Brigadier Muhozi Kainerugaba, into presidency. God has an opinion in how things are run down on this side. So he needs men, and he has men that he has sent to do that work of warning people that are in authority, of warning individuals, of warning uh, groups of people to do things according to the script of heaven. The prophecies Prophet Elvis has given, the ones I've witnessed, have been accurate because I know they come from the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God does not lie because it's the Spirit of Truth. So many times when these prophecies are given, he may not give some explicitly because of the sensitivity of some of them but he will give you the general picture such that when it appears, you will surely know this is what he meant. Elvis's prophecies are very, very accurate. From the experience I've had in the past three years, the very many prophecies, not just individual, but national and international. For so many years as a Christian, I groped around in darkness, not knowing for sure what my purpose on earth is, even if I had an understanding of what my specific talents are. I didn't know for sure how and when I was supposed to employ them for the benefit of the kingdom of God. It felt almost like having a torch flashing down on me from above, able to guide only my next step. I often took the wrong path and walked along it several strides and got my feet burnt along the way only to have to go all those strides back to the crossroad and take a whole new path, hopefully the right one this time. But all that changed when I discovered the glorious illumination of the prophetic word. Then I learned that what I had all along suspected to be my calling was indeed my calling. Just like that, all uncertainty was flashed out of the window. Instead of a torch beaming down from above, I had floodlights illuminating the entire course ahead of me. Where I once trekked timidly, I now walk boldly. Where there was uncertainty, I now walk with renewed assurance and confidence. So are you waging the good warfare? Do you have a sure prophetic word to back you up like Timothy did? Or are you swinging your sword in darkness, hoping that it somehow locates the enemy? I know I have a sure prophetic word by which I wage the good warfare. That word was given to me by a man who is the full embodiment of the New Testament prophet. A man whose prophecies are known to guide people, ministries, and nations. If I hadn't met Elvis Mbonye, I wouldn't know what the prophetic office is all about. Um, he appeared to me and he told me just exactly that I have called you as a prophet and he told me he had called me um, According to the lie uh, the order of Elisha the prophet the biblical prophet and so um, since um, I received that calling I have seen Literally almost everything that uh, you can you have read about um, the prophet Elisha uh, experiencing I've experienced it firsthand in my life and um, um, as, and so I have seen, I have, I've, I've had my eyes open, I have, uh, my eyes open to the spirit realm. I have seen angels, I've seen fallen spirits. I've come out of my body, I've seen things that are outside of uh, my geographical location. I've um, literally everything that um, you have read about the prophet Elisha, I have experienced it. There's a, a, 
Can you, there's a, a phone number that has just come to me. But um, I'm learning not to speak phone numbers in public. Because some of you guys are funny guys. You will what? Save it. Eh? <laughs> and uh, do weird things with it. Because uh, this is uh, a lady that has come. So be ready to write it down. And uh, you're going to call it now. Because uh, it has bearing. Uh, put on your phone. You see, I told you, eh, and this is one thing we want to demonstrate, that uh, I can be here and uh, I'll pick up somewhere in Kirenka. <laughs> God is a good God. Prophetically picking up someone's phone number and someone's name is not something that is odd to me. I've done it publicly and I've done it also privately. Uh, publicly at the fellowship, I've, I've, I've done that over and over again. Now, the only odd thing about this particular moment is uh, the lady uh, who I was picking up prophetically was outside of my sensory contact, meaning that she was in a, she was in, in a remote place somewhere far distant from um, where we were attending fellowship. Picked it? Is that person Hope? She's called Hope? Okay, tell her she's under my searchlight right now. Glory to God. Uh, you're actually getting it, eh? Okay, Is, does her name start with D, her other second name? D, Riwara, something. That's true, eh? Glory to God. Okay? Now, tell her there's a job she got um, towards the end of last year, uh, towards the close of last year. You're, you're what? You are going to prophesy to her and we are going to prophesy to her. This is a job she got towards the end of last year. Ask her about that. Glory to God. Now say, um, you are prophesying, can't you see? Eh? Now tell her that uh, as sure as I am a prophet of God, this month is for her uplifting. Now, um, she later on came the following week and in attendance at the fellowship and she confirmed every word precisely as I had prophetically picked up uh, from her names to her job and, and everything. Now, um, the reason as to why I do these things, it is not to draw attention to myself, it is to draw attention to God, to bring credibility uh, to a living God who, can, who, can, who knows you by name, by number, by every detail that you might believe him and believe every word that proceeds from him that is authentically true. Now, um, of course we have had skeptics um, in the past who have thought that we have stage managed uh, these things. And that is why I step into the future uh, on numerous occasions that it will be ridiculous in the mouth of, of the skeptic um, to accuse me of stage managing the future. The uniqueness you find in Elvis Monye's ministry as a prophet, his calling and commission is quite different from what a pastor would do. I'm neither a pastor nor am I an evangelist. I'm called in the office of the prophet. And uh, some people wonder, why, why wouldn't you call yourself a pastor? Uh, what would be wrong? Uh, what wrong would it be for someone to call you a pastor? And uh, you know, I tell them, it's just as wrong me calling myself a pastor as it is for a doctor to call himself an engineer or vice versa. Now, a prophet is not a pastor. Uh, and that needs to be clear because there are giftings and what I would call the orientation or disposition of a prophet uh, that is totally, uh, if I may form a word, apastoral, uh, as in there's nothing pastoral about the operation of the prophetic. And it's important that people who relate with or to the prophetic understand this, that they don't look for a pastor in a prophet. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry.
you're going to hear of things that um, um, you know that appear to be like you know cancellations donor cancellations and you're going to hear nations that are reversing those things that will not be the celebration itself amongst us but it will be a sign that the harvest is now that you may believe the word of the Lord glory to God the uniqueness of Elvis Mbonye's ministry is to his nurturing the church or the body of Christ his call to the body of Christ to make it sharper in their vision in perception to know their environment. What is the environment? How do you see things? Not to see them at first value, but what is the perception of heaven on the issues that are happening around? So it all comes from his authenticity as a true prophet of God. And you, you can, he, his word is edifying. His word is um, exhorting. It's comforting. You know, he has a very strong word of correction you know, rebuke and direction. It's, he's not telling you what you want to hear. It's coming from somewhere. It's coming from God. And it's unique. Uh, leave alone the controversy that has happened um, with, uh, with, with the judge, the justice system, whatever. Leave that alone. There's going to be another dimension that is going to emerge and it is going to bring out so many controversial things, so many controversial things, and so many uh, um, uh, shakings. This is a shaking with uh, with in, in the justice system. I just see a shaking there, and uh, have no, don't think about what has happened. This is something uh, um, that relates to it. Yet it is uh, it is it is it is fresh. It is unlike that which has happened, and it it it, it brings. A, a, a complete shaking in that system. Now the Spirit of God says that um, um, you shall know by this that I'm your judge. I'm your righteous judge and I vindicate you, says the Spirit of the Lord, and you shall not trust in the justice of this world. You shall not trust in the justice of nature and of mere men, but you shall trust in my hand you shall trust in my righteousness for it is for you says the spirit of the lord man does not have um, the capability to call someone in the office of the prophet god does um, and that is because um, the office of the prophet entails um, supernatural credentials you cannot just call yourself a prophet and you do not prophesy and by prophecy, I mean um, a supernatural revelation and prediction, uh, things that can be seen and confirmed uh, afterwards by those that hear them. Uh, one of the amazing uh, prophecies that I've seen happen under this ministry is I remember just before, a year before the Arab Spring started in, in North Africa, we were in fellowship and uh, uh, the man of God declared that there's going to be what came out as the, the Arab Spring and was talking of governments you, you don't think are going to fall, are going to come down. And that one of them was the government of, of, of Libya. And at that time, you could not think that such a thing hap would happen. These things are not even happened in Tunisia where the, the young man set himself alight. It is known that this man is the was the spark for that Arab Spring. It was a year before that happened when the prophet came, the prophecy came out, and it has happened to the detail. The most amazing prophecy that I I it was actually my first when I just um, started getting used to 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 Elvis. Mbonye going to his fellowship, it was, the, um, it was memorable because we had 
friends that lost their loved ones, the terrorist attack at the rugby club here in Kampala. When he, it was a month before, I remember it was a month before it happened, and I think it happened in July of 2010. So it, it was a month before that he said it and it actually happened. Most amazing prophecy I've witnessed as prophesied by Prophet Elvis is the one of the choppers falling from the sky and burning. He had just given it like, he had given it about two months before, but then he repeated it um, that week when the choppers fell down, as in it was really still fresh in my mind. And when I saw it, I was blown away. For well, we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Uh, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part is done away with. Um, that is exactly how I received the prophetic revelation about uh, the airport uh, in Nairobi that went into flames. Um, I remember uh, when I was um, uh, ministering at the fellowship, uh, towards the last minutes of the fellowship, I suddenly began seeing um, an airport in flames. Now, I wasn't able to tell, to distinctly tell what airport it was. Now, in my mind, I interpreted it to be um, the, it, the airport at Entebbe. I do not know for sure um, um, how it looks like. I've been there, but I cannot I, 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 I can't tell how it looks like distinctly from the airport in, in Nairobi. And so I interpreted it to be that in, in, at Entebbe. Something at the airport. Something at the airport. That, um, that is not right. At, at, around the airport, it is... Um, Thank you, Jesus. What is this? Now, when, um, about two weeks later, when um, that uh, news about the airport in, in, in Nairobi um, uh, catching flames uh, came out, that is when I knew for sure that the prophetic revelation that I was receiving then was, uh, uh, was that at, uh, in Nairobi. And so, you see, now, so that which was in part was done away with. Now, someone may ask, um, how come that time you did not see it as clearly as uh, some other, um, oftenly when you normally see these things um, um, clearly? Well, you see, um, during that time, one of the things that I can, I, I can answer to that question is uh, I, was, uh, um, I had factored in time because I was conscious, I had begun being conscious of the people going back home for uh, closing the fellowship. And so when I had factored that time in, it time affects that whole eternal revelation, that timeless revelation that you receive prophetically. And so it is so easy for you to uh, misinterpret um, the things that you are picking up prophetically when you begin factoring in time and space. All right. Uh, one thing also that I find true with um the rising of any gift is that those that have been common or operating commonly in our communities sometimes feel threatened by it and in this instance you find uh, the pastoral office may feel threatened uh, because of the rise of, of the prophetic or a prophet a prophetic voice my encounter with the ministry of prophet elvis uh, does not in any way leave me threatened uh, where I may feel like people are running off to the latest trend. Uh, in fact, I, I encourage uh, people to attend because it is beneficial when, for everyone when uh, the people that we pastor as, as pastors have heightened or raised spiritual sensitivities. The reason as to why um, the, the office of the prophet has been the most uh, misunderstood, the most abused, um, the most darkened, so to say, um, uh, of all the callings and of all the ministries, um, it is because um, fundamentally um, it, it holds, according to me, 
um, um, this, uh, the, the greatest ability to shine forth, to show forth a living God, not just in theology, but in actuality, by prophetic revelation um, that, is, um, that, can, that is irrefutable. And so uh, the enemy would have um, that office tainted. And so he will influence so many uh, to, uh, to pose themselves as prophets to tarnish that name, uh, um, that office of the prophet. So just as it was in yonder years, in the days of the kings of Israel and Judah, a prophetic voice goes out to the leaders of these and other nations. It's a voice of guidance, of direction, and of illumination. A voice that we ought to heed, because what you don't know can indeed hurt.